cloud. So week one in our 795 part two, the syllabus and what you're going to accomplish this semester, what's in front of you. And Megan, I like your picture a lot, the IU School of Ed building. We had the 30 year anniversary of the School of Education wow. a week and a half ago. The three former deans came, three of them came. They're all, well, two of them are like 90 years old and they gave speeches. And Gerardo Gonzalez, a recently former dean, and then Stacey Maroney, a current dean. I was the only faculty who was invited to speak, so I got to talk about it. I arrived when that building was built and in service. Um, they were taking the tape off the elevators as I arrived. And the first thing that happened to me was I met a guy named Richard Stewart. I walked in I, to my first day at IU in August 1992 in the elevator. And behind me on the elevator is Richard Stewart. And he said, you're Dr. Bob. You're the psychology of writing guy. How would you like to be on my dissertation? So literally, my first two minutes in this building, I was asked to be on a dissertation. So at that point, I said, I'm going to be on a lot of dissertations here. I've now been on 120 some dissertations. I'm currently, as I said, I'm on 20 different state people are at different stages of the dissertation. And some people are never, I shouldn't say never going to finish. They might never finish. They're just hanging on. Most will finish. Um, but of those 20, I've gotten eight through so far this year. I'm shooting for 14, um, which is a record. I don't think I've ever had more than seven or eight. So I'm, I'm also exhausted making that record. <laughs> so, um, so Richard, I says, Richard, what are you studying? He says, well, I'm studying union psychology. I'm looking at expert writers waking up in dream states at midnight and looking at candles and meditating and having creative thought come to mind and connecting this to Jungian archetypes. And I said, wow, I've arrived at the right place. This is really cool to be on a dissertation. Indiana is what a wonderful place. I've never had another dissertation. Cool. <laughs> so you all have a challenge to make your dissertations more cool than Richard Stewart having expert writers <laughs> contemplate creative thoughts while waking up in dream states at midnight and connecting it to different Jungian archetypes. The dissertation you can find online, actually, and Kim is now challenged. To, she's looking, she's Kim's going, what, am I, what can I do? <laughs> and she just might, she just might. So that was an interesting first day. Um, and I went from teaching a class at West Virginia University with three to five students in it on um, the learning theories to having over 30 students at IU, all wanting, all fighting for points. Like you, I was just talking about, she wants to, what points do I get for things? They're all fighting for one point, two point, because no one had taught the course for a while because two people retired. One person went to Australia from my department in ed psych, and I was in the program in learning cognition and instruction. The learning science people who are joining IST now joined uh, in 2005. I was helped, I helped create learning science but they disbanded or deleted my program in learning cognition instruction. So it's kind of ironic that the reason I'm in IST is because my program was disbanded by learning science people and now learning science people are rejoining IST. Um, it's a weird feeling sort of, um, but there's a lot more. You can have, take me out for a beer. I'll tell you the three beer stories and the two beer or the one beer stories. And they get better over the number of beers that you, Sabahat's in Bloomington, so she can actually take me out and buy me one beer, two beer. Yeah, beer. I'm actually really curious about that story, how the two <laughs> programs, yeah. Yeah, there was some, uh, let's just, in the 1990s, IST faculty and language ed faculty used to have faculty that, so language ed had whole language people. And this is being recorded, but everybody knows this. I'm not telling you anything people don't know. And whole language people and just the basic facts people, um, grammar-based instruction. Um, what do you call that? There's a name for that, but it, um, but anyways, the phonics approach, phonics approach and whole language, they fought, you know, all the time. You know? So, and eventually the whole language people won, but now again, it's come back the other direction again. It's kind of a blend. It is, it's kind of winning. I just read an article last week on this and I put it in my other class uh, syllabus. And in IST, the, the direct instruction people, the step-by-step you know, we do this step, we do this step, we do that step. The um, prescriptive instruction people were fighting the constructivists. And when I was at West Virginia in January in 1992, 
Padma Maduri, my grad student, walked into my office and she says, Dr. Bonk, you need to move to IU, go to Indiana. I says, I'm here, I'm you know, your advisor. I want to get you through. No, you need to go to Indiana. And I says, well, why? She says, well, I got back from the, the conference I went to, you know, like the site conference or AECT or something. She says, I, I had Indiana people, Tom Duffy and five of his grad students were there. And one of them was my guest in 622 next, next Monday was one of the students she saw. His name is Pete Holmbein. So Pete teaches for us now. You might have had Pete Holmbein's course. She says, doing fasc fascinating things. We were, Padma and I were driving two hours and a half each way to Wheeling, West Virginia, where we created a learning center for kids at risk. And we were using these knowledge building kinds of tools and having, it was, we were testing all sorts of software. And she says, they have it all in this brand new building in the School of Ed. You just can work there. You have to drive two hours. You should go to Indiana. And then my, I was in Paris for the conference and my father was taking care of my kids. And uh, I, I called home with the calling cards they had at the time. And he says, I got, you got a letter from Indiana University. You want me to open it? And he says, sure. So he opens it up and he says, They're, they have all this money to build a new building at Indiana University from AT&T and Ameritech. You better go to Indiana University. And he worked for AT&T his whole life. So, he, so my, my top student wanted me to come to Indiana. My father wanted me to come to Indiana. And lo and behold, I came 30 years ago this month. Um, and we had a celebration, a rededication of the building. I'll try and get you the video of it. I heard that I was kind of humorous. Uh, they gave me five minutes. I took 10 minutes. Um, maybe I wasn't as funny as talking to 7,000 people the other night. But um, anyways, I try and... You know, I, I think having um, some humor embedded in not being so serious, but there's also a story about learning sciences. I mean, they, they think, you know, you can't be serious if you're telling jokes. But, um, you know, anyways, um, we have a syllabus and we should probably go through the syllabus and I can keep telling more and more stories. But Kim's getting bored. So um, <laughs> and uh, she's heard some of them already. You know, you don't really don't need me to read the first two pages, um, but you can uh, on your own. We uh, have a mix in this class. As I said, last time I had 11, the first time I had five or six, 11 was a lot to try and get feedback to people on all their proposals. Um, eight should be a nice number, should be a more doable number. I'm kind of, it's, it's, it's actually, yeah, it's a good number. I'm glad, I'm glad we didn't get any more than that. I was a little worried people signed up early, all the EDD students signed up early, except for uh, Sabah, I didn't know as a PhD. So it's good to have a PhD student in the group. Um, so we will, we will have some individual consultation weeks, um, but I want to pose one thing. I'm thinking about having just 15 minutes or so of time every week for one of you just to tell what you're working on and to get some kind of feedback from the group. Um, and I'll have soon may set up this, the schedule for that. Um, is, uh, is that a, a, a good idea? Or do you have other ideas of things that you would like us to do during class? The, I call this class time the synchronous. You do, this is optional. You do not have to come. Um, but I will try and make it beneficial for you um, to make your, your time val uh, valued. Does anyone have something they'd like us to accomplish during any synchronous sessions um, besides mentoring one-to-one -one sessions, besides kind of group um, discussion of your dissertation, besides um, instruct, uh, teaching you about writing, which I'm going to do about dissertation writing and that kind of thing, tips for writing, besides having guests come in talking about their dissertations and qualifying exams and, and, and that kind of thing. And I have a couple people talking, we're going to talk about research methods, some experts in the field out there, at least two of them, I'm thinking, maybe I, I have more than that, um, that will get us thinking about research methods. Is there any topic or anything that you would like me to, to address or to be addressed during one of the weeks or two of the weeks or each week? Um, yeah, yeah, there's something that I'm actually really interested in. And as I skimmed through the syllabus again, I did not see this, so I apologize if I've overlooked it. Um, discussing the survey, like our questionnaires that we're going to disseminate, like, um, oh, sorry. Um, so Victoria, I cannot pronounce her last name. She just finished up this past year, Abrick, right. and she was uh, in my lap this class last time I taught it. Okay, she's yeah. I, how she's, do you? I don't know how you say last name, but yeah. anyways. So I know she sent out her survey 
through the AECT portal somehow, um, because I actually got the survey and it was a really interesting survey that she sent out. I took it because it was relevant to what I do professionally. And then because of my answers, she sort of did that focused interview. And I know that's something that I want to do with my project. So I just think it would be beneficial, at least for me, to, um, you know, have someone discuss that process of creating their survey. How do they send it out? And how do they decide who they're going to do those interviews with, picking those sorts of people? So that, that will probably be covered in one-to-one -one sessions with me. I, I did a lot of okay. survey research. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, and I built a survey tool. Um, but, oh, sweet. Okay. but I could have Sunmei create a little tutorial on using Qualtrics. So Sunmei, do you know, have you used Qualtrics, Sunmei? Actually, I used to use it for my work, not for dissertation. Yeah. yeah. But I will use it for my dissertation soon. Yeah. So she's going to use it and she's, and, and she's a technology expert and she's the TA in here. So maybe we'll talk after soon, maybe, maybe having a short tutorial about using Qualtrics. Well, so instead of, instead of, you know, to get the tool that IU endorses is Qualtrics, you, oh, you know, okay. yeah. So well, it's free, free for all students to use. Well, here's a question. So I know through my works, I work at IU, um, you know, what's the difference between REDCap and Qualtrics? Which is better? Which should we use? I've heard some people say, you know, that are actually professionals, oh, you should be using REDCap because it can do so many things. And others say, oh, no, you should use Qualtrics. So how do you know which one's the better one to use? Well, I also have another former student, um, Merve Bastigan, who wrote a book chapter on survey tools. And Merve's oh, nice. going to be a guest in my other class i may she may be a guest in here as well so i could have her do a short presentation on all the various survey tools that are out there she's done one mm -hmm. and so but again i was an i created a tool in 2003 to 2010 i knew every tool on the market today i bet you 95 percent of those tools don't exist Probably, anymore yeah. so being trained in specific tools um, it's best to train you in what exists today, and that's Qualtrics, which IU has. Mm -hmm. Top Hat, Red Hat, Red Tool. What I Red never cap. heard, I, I never heard of it. Oh, so, it's an IU um, tool. It's free to us. It's an IU tool. Oh yeah, that yeah. Yeah, that's an IU Red tool. Cap. Right. Yeah, Red it's cap. this IU survey thing. It of is course, IU very. Red. Yeah. It is incredible. I've played with it. It is incredibly cumbersome. Qualtrics is so much easier compared mm -hmm. to the two, mm -hmm. but I just don't know why you know, which is better for dissertation. I don't know. Actually, uh, I I've think had... that, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Actually, I think there is you no, know, you know, just best thing. So it's up to your case. Just the things I'm just simple to collect data, just a Google form is okay. You know, that's because it's really simple so everyone can use it. So usually just for generally, I use Google form. That's because it's really easy to create and collect data and then I can see the analysis. That's it. But you want to show the beautifully designed, you know, survey. At that time, you can use Qualtrics and other uh, advanced okay. tools. So yeah. it's totally up to you. So yeah. don't use Qualtrics if you don't want to learn. That's the Qualtrics is a little bit time you have to spend to understand. Right, mm -hmm. but Google Form it is just to create, just to send it. That's it. So it's really simple. Yeah, so it's depends. my advice. So yeah, yeah, Depend. I agree with. I agree. Yeah. So in my experience of the last fifty dissertations that I've been on, I'd say a, five years ago everyone used Survey Monkey, and or Zoomerang, and I or Survey Share, my tool, Survey Share. A Survey Share still exists. Survey Monkey still exists. I'm not sure about Zoomerang. But today, and most recent, it's been Google Forms or Qualtrics. I don't think I've seen a, uh, a single dissertation using REDCap of School of Ed dissertations. Now, it might be new, and it might be the new thing that we all might jump to, but people have recently jumped from using SurveyMonkey to Qualtrics, almost all, because there's no fee. SurveyMonkey, my team, my research team used SurveyMonkey for a series of research studies over the past five years, seven years looking at MOOCs, Massive Open Online Class instructors. We have a database of 3,000 MOOC instructors. We've been mining it for dozens of, over a dozen studies, all using, or most of them using SurveyMonkey. Recent ones was using Qualtrics. Um, and again, 
Merve may, you know, she may have her a uh, couple. So, I, it, so soon may remind me to invite Merve in to present on survey tools. I think that would be a value, and maybe next week uh, or whenever Merve's. Um, she's been hired full time by our School of Public Health. She graduated a year ago. Um, and it's been on a postdoc for a year, but right, she'll be she's transitioning. So survey tools is one um, question. Anything else that you would like us to include? Yeah, Sabahat. Yeah, it's something kind of like career tips. Once you completed the research, how to disseminate it, how to make people aware of your research, you know, yeah. Like how I, to communicate with the larger academic community and, mm -hmm. you know, be a part of it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. There's a guy named George Valencianos who came to my class one time. He's he was supposed to be my student. Um, let's just say his girlfriend was in the program, and they no longer became boyfriend girlfriend. So he decided to get his degree at the University of Minnesota instead of Indiana. Um, but uh, he's a good friend of mine, and George has a book on digital scholarship, which I think is free to download. So soon they write that down too. Digital scholarship. George, just say George. George Valencianos. Um, I could invite George back in to talk about how, and he's very published. He's one of them, he's been out maybe 15 years as a faculty. He's probably more published than almost anyone in the field. His Google Scholar rate ranking is really high. Um, you know, I could have him talk about key tips to help you become an early career success. Um, so, I, you know, we could definitely bring George in. He's in Canada, in Vancouver Island now, in, in um, Royal Roads University as the distance learning chair of Canada. He's, like I said, very successful. That's one thing I can tell you is, and we can, we, one, we could get his book for everybody. I think that he's got two books that are free and one's on the online student experience and I think what the digital scholar book is free as well I, I, it, it, it's from Athabasca University which is the largest open university in Canada it's the largest university in Canada the third thing I will tell you is that during the last couple of weeks in this class the last four weeks I'll be giving writing tips for dissertations and publishing as part of that I'm also going to be talking exactly about what you just saying how to get and disseminate your work so it's widely read seen and you be, can grow as a scholar, an early scholar, and find yourself become on the road to success. I, I cannot promise success. I will say on the road to success. So that is an important thing, um, and I, we will address it. Uh, it, it. The question is the degree to which we will address it. So um, we can address it more heavily if we bring George in, and so we'll try, but I will already address it. So, so these two things, the survey, and the scholarly, you know, the young scholar or emerging scholar or, or budding scholar, how to help uh, them find success. We will do both of those things, but I'll find ways in which to, you know, if we have to move things around, we'll do that. Um, other things, yeah, Kim. Um, so my, my question, or I don't know if it's necessarily a question, but, um, I tend to, and I don't know if anybody else is like this in here, uh, but I tend to uh, overcomplicate everything and make it really big. Like my project is really big. And one of the things that came up in our department meeting, and it was a concern by a lot of folks because they had to vote on my um, dissertation topic at my department meeting, um, was how big this is going to possibly get. So if there are any tips about how to really focus um, on the most important things and um, how to make some, not necessarily making it massive, but making it something that's quality over quantity, I would really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. So when I moved to IST from EdPsych, I got to Marty, Marty Siegel's old office. Marty is a fairly well-known faculty member, he moved informatics and became the associate dean. On the wall, on Marty's wall, he had a sticker or a, um, on the wall. And it said, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. <laughs> so, you know, you know, what is the main thing that you want to study and that you're interested in, that you're passionate about? to answer now often a main thing can, can have many tributaries spinning out of it and, and roots 
uh, for uh, sub questions that are going to help a particular stakeholders and other ones that help other stakeholders. But what is the main thing for you? So there was one, one of the ways to do some of this is that you have your dissertation, but you may have your project. You may have your emphasis. You may have your, your, um, uh, your overarching research area, but you're still going to pull out a piece for your dissertation. I'd almost recommend that one that you that you not promise people too much from the dissertation itself, uh, but you promise them more from the project that you might be on. And so that when it comes time to when you're finishing your dissertation, that's not going to make or break what's happening in your setting or for people, but you have a, 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 a larger something that you're addressing along the way. So many students collect extra data. And in your case, you're going to collect extra data, probably. I haven't read your stuff, but you might have sub questions and you might not even, you might only glancingly tell your committee that you're doing that because they're going to get petrified that you're going to kill yourself. You're going to be overwhelmed. Uh, and, but you're going to do it anyways. And so uh, it's per perfectly appropriate to have you have three research questions in your dissertation or two or four, but you can have question five and six also there, but they're not reported in your dissertation, you're, but you're gonna collect data related to five and six and maybe analyze number five, six and seven after you finish the dissertation, maybe immediately after, and then pull it all together into a larger report. And, and so that's that's a way to, to, to be able to uh, satisfy all the stakeholders and yet still get done. Uh, and so it, it's the prioritization for you. The first, first most important priority is you and your dissertation. Of course, you don't want to leave out your workplace and you want it to survive or your program to survive. So if that's got, if you got programmatic issues, then you maybe need to address that first. But my, my recommendation is you, you focus on the, on the area that is not, maybe not most passionate about, but is the thing that is your, your dissertation that you're presenting back to us. That is one thing. Your job setting and all of the EDD students, they, some professors think differently. EDD students' dissertation should be impacting your workplace or future workplace, or you know, it should have relevance and meaning back in a, the work setting, or as I said, future work setting, or maybe prior work setting. I don't agree with that totally. Okay, I, if if one of you wants to do PhD level dissertation, I have no problems with that. Um, so you know, to me, it's what you want to do, not necessarily who you will impact um, but most people feel like the dissertation at an, an EDD one is about the, the relevance impact and meaning within the work setting so you will have other members in your dissertation besides me that you need to satisfy um, so you want to take the latter route and, but as I said Yaniv studied defense language institute he just he just interviewed nine instructors not big scale but he only had access to nine because of IRB issues and they were disbanding the program. But his theoretical, just knock your socks off. He basically has a book that he could get published, I told him, you know. So it was amazing what he did. And, and some of you may know Yaniv, you might've had him in a class, I don't know. Um, if you recognize the name, Yaniv Oded, O-D-E-D. -E um, did any of you run into Yaniv? Okay, so I'll- He oh, yeah. said the interpreter with the US Army. Yeah, he well, did a presentation at the conference a few years ago. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, so he worked. Well, he's not U.S. Army. It is, it's Defense Language Institute. It's like the Army. Yeah, yeah Defense Language Institute. There was a program they're launching Hebrew, Arabic, and all yeah. that. Practically, yeah. yeah, I remember. Yeah, he's a smart guy. So if anyone wants his dissertation, uh, soon they remind me. Uh, y a n i v the dissertation, and I will send it to. I, we just. Well, he may be doing revision. He's got minor revisions, so I might have to wait till he resubmits. He just defended two weeks ago, and um, you know we I, I, we passed him. So we, 
So anyways, I, I'm sort of answering your question. There is no one right answer to the question. It comes up a lot. Um, and that's, that would be my approach to it. Uh, and this will come back. We'll come back to this in our one-to-one -one meetings. So um, other, and so I'll, I'll also think about whether someone else I could bring in here could address that. Um, uh, yeah, because for instance, Maynard has been working with me for seven years and she studied a slice of MOOCs in, in, in Strike, but then had a, had sub data she collected that have actually got a couple of studies out of the sub data, extra data, and those have gotten more hits than actually the original data set in terms of citations and stuff. Uh, she studied instructors, but we also studied students along the way. Um, and so that's a good example where she was able to get six things published from her dissertation in her first year. It's pretty amazing. Um, in three years, she has 38 journal articles published and a book. Right? She's pretty amazing. So I could bring Maine in. She's coming into my other class. Uh, and she's coming in here, uh, I think, a week. So we'll hear from her. So I'll, ha I'll, have, I'll have her think about that because um, it is anything else that anyone's thinking of as Ben. Yeah, um, if the group thinks it's helpful, maybe just walking through one of the um, qual questions, not, not writing out anything, but I would approach it this way and just like as a group talk through maybe like the article analysis. Mm -hmm. So we could do both the article analysis and the case and others. There's, there's two, the morning, the first day has two different things you're doing. One's an article critique, and then one's like you are an IST evaluator, and you have what are you, you going to do? That that's the question. I don't create. I don't grade. Again, I'm an ed psych person. They don't think I'm qualified. I'm probably not qualified. I do grade the critiques, but we should probably have a discussion on both. So, but maybe not too early to let you take the practice exam first, mm -hmm. and then maybe the week before the real exam. We can maybe, or two weeks before the real exam, maybe end of October, uh, before you come in in November, we can do the critique in here. So write that one down too soon, maybe last third week, three or four of October to do um, critique analysis as a class, you know, but then I'd give you the article ahead of time and you maybe come in having read that article, right, for critique purposes. Uh, so that actually, we have several captions from our break room. So the first one is actually core practice. So do you, you know, give feedback or feedback to all students? That's because there are many practical, you know, practice questions, I think. So, okay. And then right now, eight students. So, so, yeah. so if you asked. take the practice exam early, mm -hmm. I yeah. will grade them and give you feedback. If you take the right. practice exam the end right of October, now. My life is crazy because right. conference season and everything else, and the the chance for me to get feedback before you take the exam. If you're taking them a week before, um, I, I'll try, but I can't guarantee. If you take the exam mm -hmm. before the first end of the second week of October, I will give you feedback. Okay. okay. And so. then the second question is that actually our syllabus the due date is not aligned with the topic of the week. So for example, week two is, you know, actually August 30th is a starting day, but you is the same. So students are confused. Oh, why would I do that? Because why one week later, maybe? Yeah. No? no, no, it's actually due that day. Do the day. But you have a four day grace period. So it's due whatever the 30th is, is that Tuesday? And you have a four day grace, so you have till Saturday of that week to turn it in officially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it actually, okay. I, I, it's not a mistake. I'm trying okay. to get you to do stuff early <laughs> okay. in the yeah. class okay. uh, to force you in and get you started. Because those are easy things, relatively, in terms of quantity. In terms of thought, they're kind of difficult because you know writing up a research question is not for any, no one. It's not easy for me. It's not going to be easy for you as a you know more doing first time. So, um, so those are real due dates. In fact, due August 26th, originally, in the original syllabus, it said due August 23rd, which is today. <laughs> I changed it to the 26th. So those are a couple, those are meant to be easy things that we could get accomplished and get out of the way. So this brings up a, a, a topic I was gonna mention. This is not a normal syllabus for me. The, my way of doing a syllabi is having two things due at the midterm and two at the end. 
and having four assignments plus maybe discussion. The way this course is structured, they want seven, what do they call these things where you turn something in? Um, deliverables, that's a big IST word, deliverables. <laughs> and so we have these deliverables. So the, they're smaller deliverables. And some of you have done the plagiarism test already, right? And you've already sent me that. Uh, and if you've done it before and you've taken and passed, you just give me a paragraph of what you remember about taking that plagiarism test, if you remember anything. You don't have to take it again if you've done it before. So if you haven't done it, try and print out, a, take it and get past it and send me a, the certificate. Um, and this is important. And Dr. Ted Frick from IU developed that. So this is, he gets millions of people taking that plagiarism test. We've had a dissertation on that plagiarism test. We had a, a student named Chesor, who's from Turkey. He did his dissertation on that. He called it a, a MOOC. It's, it's not really, it's a self-paced MOOC in, a, in effect. It's an open-ended kind of thing. So, um, so yeah, um, those are the real dates, I think. There may be typos in here, no doubt. Um, but in the third iteration, there shouldn't be too many typos. But I change things from time to time. And um, I think all the dates in here are Tuesdays, I think. Um, I put us at 6 o'clock on Tuesday. We could change this to 7 o'clock. But I actually prefer 6. We can get done early enough in the evening before anything else. I see um, someone shaking their head yes. Um, I know Sunni has a little problem with that because she works at Stanford. And they, the president of Stanford needs her help late in the afternoon. No, <laughs> she, she creates mobile apps for Stanford and other kinds of things. So um, I know Monday was difficult for her to come at six. So we made that seven. And, and soon, May, if you can't make it every week at six and come join us at seven, that's perfectly fine. Um, you know, but. And no. one, one yeah. more question. Yua, you, uh, you were going to add to that. <laughs> your, your time zone is different. You're in central time. So it's really five o'clock for you. Is this no, okay? Yeah, absolutely. I have a question regarding the submissions. I know on the syllabus, they said we have to submit on Canvas. Will that assignment later be created on Canvas for the plagiarism test and for the statement goal? Only the, only the plagiarism test, I think, is not in Canvas. I'm not sure if there's any points assigned. Is there other points assigned for the plagiarism test? Other 10 points? What is it? What, a bonus I, I think right now, so if I go to assignments, I only see the practice quiz and the qualifying exam. I don't see any other assignments. Really? So. Well, then I forgot to publish them. And I'll have to add them in. So, Sume, um, you know, I, I thought I put them in a long time ago. Um, yeah, yeah. Back in June or, yeah. yeah, it's been, they should be there. Someone else, can someone else check Canvas for me real quick? Let's see what under assignments. Look under assignments. So the, I'm under assignments right now, and mm -hmm. it just has for upcoming assignments. Um, there are three quizzes and two cases. That's so the quiz. That's the quiz thing. So yeah, the other. Good. That's hmm, it. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that means I didn't upload the assignments themselves. So what happens? The the to be honest, the quiz is really difficult to create because there's a timer in there, and there's all sorts of things to. There's like, a, it's like a 15 step process, maybe 30. So the, the trick is to, to take and have a take, say from this class, port it to the new class. So I, I took the old from my old and I ported it up so I didn't have to recreate it. It takes a whole morning to create that quiz, literally four hours it took me, maybe five. So I saved time, but in the process I may have not put the other assignments in. So I was so worried that the quiz wouldn't work, but you know, and there's no guarantee that it will continue to work that way, but last time it did, it works. So there's a there's amount of time that you have to take the quiz. And so it's like the real exam kind of thing without a human being there in the room. Um, so that's a good point. That's easy for me to, to, to put. I, I think, I thought I put the assignments in and, but maybe, yeah, let me, let me, let me take another look. Maybe I just didn't publish them um, when I did that. I, I could have sworn I, I, I saw that problem and I think I put them in, maybe I just didn't publish and you don't see them yet. So let, right after class, I'll do that. Other things, that's a great point. Um, so I should probably talk about the assignments a little bit about the people I'm bringing in here. Or we're going to hear from this semester. 
So again, Meng Wan Zhao, who went with, who was a master's student with Yua uh, in 2010 or 11, you started 11? 2010. 2010, it is 10. Yeah. So they, they took my monster syllabus class, uh, Rachel, the uh, emerging learning technologies. And uh, there are three from China, plus Jason, one man and three women that uh, yeah, were sitting in the second row to my right. And um, they did great um, final projects, um, uh, as I remember. But, Good memory. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you, one of you had Elliot as an actor in your final project. Yeah, I had him as my yeah. actor. Yeah. yeah, see, I remember. Okay, so we have one yeah. student in the program or in the program at the time who was a Broadway play actor. Um, and um, he's still in Bloomington. So we have Meng Wan who's studying, uh, her doing a dissertation collection in Sunmei. So we have two students who are collecting data right now, uh, talking, coming to us next week, giving us tips about uh, qualifying exams, proposal writing, and other things. Then we have Rob Elliott from IUPUI who had his dissertation defense on my day of 700 jogging in a row back on February 15th. He had no revisions. He was one of two students who never had, didn't have any revisions. He studied mobile learning on all the IU campuses. He had 30 million data points to analyze. So you talk about a too broad a scope, Kim. I think Kim might have attended his virtually, in fact. Um, and you may have met him. Well, you met him. You came to Indianapolis. So. I, I met him, yes. And, and we had Zi Hong. And Zi Hong took 15 years to graduate, but she finally graduated a few months ago um, and works for IU in the U, in University Tech Services. Um, so the two of them will talk about recent. They recently defended and went through. And so that's it is just the first three weeks. We have people who are in the midst of collecting who have recently defended and Angie defended of uh, three years ago, approximately. Uh, then we have Dr. Tom Reeves. We're gonna have an at eight, what's called an eight, eight, um, AMA, ask me anything. So Tom Reeves is one of the big names in the field of educational technology or IST. He recently retired from the University of Georgia. He has books on design-based research. And often he comes in this class or other classes talk about what design-based research is. I may have him talk a little bit about that, but I really want it to be kind of a getting you to ask questions about your dissertation. So you're not just getting answers from me. I want to bring at least once or twice this semester other people so you can get feedback from other experts in the field. And we have three books we've written, uh, edited together. Um, so I know Tom quite well. Week five is Erin Crisp, who I said we published her qualifying exam. So that would be interesting to bring Erin back in here. She's come a couple of times. Um, she's similar to Angie. So if you liked Angie, you'll like Erin. Um, she'll be week five. We have Adam Mills coming from IU to talk about IRBs. So Adam will lay out what doing an IRB is all about. Um, and then week seven, we'll have the consultation meetings with me. I'll probably have all hours of the day on a Tuesday mapped out and I'll let you sign up for any hour of that day or if you can't do it, uh, we'll do Wednesday or Monday or whatever, but we'll try and get them all, all eight meetings on one day. It could be late at night, could be, you know, midday, whatever you would like. Um, I'll probably try and do several in a row, like a, a group of uh, three or four and then three or four at night or something like that. Uh, there'll be half hour blocks approximately. I'll leave 15 minutes maybe between sessions so that uh, if it goes longer or, you know, uh, or whatever. We have technology issues. Oh, and last time I had Florence Martin from the, she's, she now, she's, it says UNCC Charlotte. She now moved to North Carolina State as of last week. And um, Florence did a great job talking about systematic reviews of the research, which is really what people are doing today because there's so much research happening. You need to know about meta-analyses and systematic reviews of the research. She is about to sign a book contract with Sage uh, or Rutledge, I think Sage, on doing systematic reviews. Her presentation was top notch last time. We're currently doing a special issue of the online learning journal on the research on online learning, systematic reviews. We did one two years ago for ETRD on systematic reviews of emerging technology. We used it in my monster class, that, that uh, special issue. So I know Florence fairly well from the two special issues. And then Merve is going to come in. Also, we can ask Merve to talk about surveys as part of the, her 10 tips on literature reviews. And she's going to have 10 tips on research questions. So we'll just ask her to talk about survey methods um, and instrumentations out there. So um, 
I forgot who asked that question. So I think she left, right? They have Shannon, yeah, okay. Um, so we've got Shannon. And then we, a uh, former ISK professor, Dr. John Hitchcock, uh, we're gonna ask, ask John anything session. He did a presentation. He, he's an expert at mixed methods. He's really big and he's big. He's got the mixed methods group around the whole country that he organizes or was part of. And he lives in Bloomington, although he no longer works for IU. He now works for a consulting company. And before IU, he was at Ohio University in Athens, Ohio, um, which is appropriate because he's coming before Thanksgiving. Athens is known for their Halloween party. Um, on November 1st, we're going to have Teron Wong, who graduated a year ago, and Marie. Maria, maybe Maria A.G., who just graduated, um, talk about presenting and defending dissertations and uh, their tips on communication for dissertations. On November 8th, we're going to have former ISD student Tiffany Roman and Susie Granseth, uh, who both graduated about Susie 15 years ago, Tiffany in the past five years or so. Tiffany's at Kennesaw State. Susie's at University of Houston. We've done presentations together on writing. And, um, and so that we'll be talking about writing advice. It says part two. I guess we have writing advice part one some week. I don't see it on the syllabus. Writing advice part one. Where is writing advice part one? Um, but there's part two. Soon maybe you see writing advice part one. <laughs> so then uh, week 15, we have writing advice part three. And that's from Maina Ju, who will talk to address maybe Kim's question. And then myself will give the G3 of writing. Um, great stories, gentle guidelines, and gigantic scholarly gains is our title of our talk. On week 14, I'll have more one-to-one -one consultings. Um, and week 16, uh, we'll share drafts of our prospectus and kinds and things. Um, one of those weeks, week 14 or 15, I, I think last time I may have done them as paired with two people so they could get feedback from me and another person. That may be week 15, what we do, um, have some paired sessions uh, and then have a group session. So I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll see how that, you know, yeah, maybe, maybe that's what we'll do. So that's kind of it. And you'll see each of these um tasks along the way um, i've asked to use to use canvas uh, i hate canvas because canvas doesn't have a time date stamp of when someone submits it so every time i download i have to re-download everyone's um which is kind of a pain but we're going to go with canvas um canvas actually has a timestamp. just do it through speed grader it will show you on the other side the time I, somebody said. yeah but i don't speed grade Ah, okay. I, print, I, I print out everything and okay. I read them, I, I mark them up. So the speed grading, Canvas is built by a, people who got their computer science degree at BYU, Brigham Young, all young people. And they thought they, they, they built Canvas for large section undergraduate classes where they need to have speed grading by the instructor. They weren't thinking about graduate courses when they built Canvas and the drop boxes in Canvas. Uh, at least my standpoint. So Aisha, I, I like your no notion, that's great, but uh, I'm not- I, I, I use it and I use it to give my students feedback and a lot of stuff and stuff. I understand it has shortcomings, but they do re uh, regular updates. So I think yeah. it's better than I started. So. Yeah, maybe it is better now. Maybe I need to check out uh, and see if it can handle that. that. But I have trouble also, I, I don't want to read everything. A dissertation, I cannot read and edit, I print them out and read them. Otherwise, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd lose my eyesight. I've read, you know, I, I literally been on 25 completed dissertation on 20 proposals. And, you know, and the teaching this class gets another, you know, eight of, so it's a lot of paper. <laughs> it's a lot of reading. I'm killing a lot of trees. <laughs> uh, but I write, so what happens with me is when you revise the dissertation, you send the whole thing and I'll read it electronically, you highlight in yellow what you change. And I, I like, so the, you know, I might have a 150 page dissertation, only 10 pages are highlighted in yellow what you change. I won't print the whole thing out then. But the first iteration, I print everything out in the first go around because I'm a serious editor. So, um, and, and don't rely on me to be your editor, but I will edit, you know, things. I, um, I check references pretty, 
carefully. So be AP, use APA. People like APA seven. I hate APA seven, but abide by APA seven. And if you don't, do APA six. You know, from the standpoint of this class, I think you can still submit APA six dissertations to IU and accept them. I, I think, um, but. Um, <clears throat> other things in here, we talked about blogging or um, reading reflections. Option C, as someone pointed out, um, was it Megan or Shannon or someone had, uh, was that? Shannon. Shannon. She's worried about that. So option C would be do a visualization, a concept map, a flow chart, a mind map of what you, your journey in this class and what you've learned. And if you don't want to write in, in journal every week, you can do a visualization of some kind. I told her you could create a card game on research methods or something. You know, you don't have to do blogging and reflective writing, whatever it is that helps you synthesize across what you've learned in here. What um, else? So um, we we got a question related to blogging. So yeah. the blogging just link is submitted to you yeah. and me, not yeah. with the other student, right? We can share them with everyone, but we, you know, we can put them in a put everyone's blog posts and have them shared, and people can get feedback. But it's really just meant to be an individual thing mm -hmm. with, okay. with you and I, um, personal, you know, perfect personal, private, that kind of thing. So does it have to be formal, or if you want to stress out, like, oh my lord, can you write something like that in there? You can write something like that in there. You can have jokes in there, pictures of your grandmother. Um, all that kind of stuff. In fact, people, you know, in my classes, if you turn in assignments with pictures of your grandmother, you get a bonus point. So, um, you know, or grandfather. Um, there is one thing that's confusing in here. And that is the assignment number five. Draft of prospectus. That's, it should really, it should say draft of, proposal spectus because it's not really the complete proposal and it's more than a prospectus. A prospectus is a two pager of what you're gonna do. A proposal ends up being like 50 page, six plus references, seven, 60 page plus reference, or some cases like two language ed students. I recently had 150 page plus references. They're, they basically have their dissertation done at first proposal stage. Um, so it's somewhere in between, it's it, it just, it basically, you're putting all the pieces back together. You're putting Humpty Dumpty together. Humpty Dumpty, we're building Humpty Dumpty's parts, and the prospectus proposal is putting these parts together into one document that leads you to doing a proposal and having a finished proposal. Some of you will be glistening, shiny, and have a proposal, real proposal at the end. Some of you still have a little bit incomplete in, the, in, in some of the some shadows and some gaps and some holes and that's that's okay we want you to get on the road to finishing a proposal i can't we can't guarantee having your proposal done at the end of this class that's that's a goal but that's not an assignment there's a difference between having an assignment that must do and uh and a can do or hope do so there's hope that you get close to a full proposal but the must do you must have these pieces and you put those pieces together and build that Humpty Dumpty up. And when you look at it, you might say, well, I really didn't do this part, all the method section of the, you know, whatever the timeline, we don't, I don't know what the timeline is gonna be for this yet. So that's, that's yet to be etched in stone. Um, but often at your proposal meeting, the faculty will wanna know what's your timeline for finishing and collecting data and all that kind of stuff. So you put that in the proposal and it doesn't, it gets deleted when you do the full dissertation, you see. But when you're taking this class, you might not have the timeline at the end, or you might not have maybe fully fleshed out the literature review. You might have substance in your literature review, but there might be aspects of the literature review you still have left to do. And some of it might depend on your committee and what they you know, uh, give you advice to include. And then the committee can say, Dr. Bonk gave you fairly good gu guidance, but this second research question is no good. We need to reshape that question or that third question. There's, I'm not going to be an expert at all eight of your topics. I will help you get questions that are dissertation like, but they might not be dissertation ready for your committee. That's, so every committee will have their stamp. I can only get you to have it, a, it presentable. So we'll, our goal will be to make it presentable. 
acceptable is a different story. Um, in, I've seen all sorts of things happen. I've seen faculty members playing footsie under the table when we had face-to-face -face proposals and kicking each other. And, you know, and I'm like, oh my God, this student's not gonna fare so well here, you know? Um, and this poor student is coming virtually from another country or state and doesn't see the faculty playing footsie about her, his or her uh, research questions and basically, you know, fighting each other over what the, what the students should be doing for a dissertation. You know, I've seen all sorts of things. So I can, I can get you ready, but I can't guarantee, you know, so I'll do the best I, I can. So, you know, I, I hope that you all educate me in the process. I will learn something from all eight of yours and um, I will push you, I will nudge you a little bit here and there. I will say, I'm confused. I'm not sure what this means. So each of these little pieces are, are gonna force me to ask those kind of questions. And sometimes I'll ask those questions over and over again in each part. I, and there may be times where you fill your research questions out or your statement of purpose and I'll approve it for the assignment, but we've got to go back at the end, we might go back to it and change that because you've, you've changed other things along the way, or you've found you, there's no literature review for that. You know, that's, there's, just, there's steps along the process, along the way, but you, it's back and forth. So I haven't specifically got at things in the syllabus, but does this help a little bit? I'm sorry, you are that we don't have the assignments in the in the canvas. That's just, it's, yeah, but we'll fix that. We're at the end here, I think, or close to the end. Please ask a question. Sumi, do you have anything to add? Anything that I missed on on here? No, actually, I think so. That's enough. But actually, I want to add one more for IIB review. That's because I experienced that point. Actually, to pass the IRB approval, you need another city certificate. So actually, I think that you have a base one, but that is not enough. You have a different one. So maybe later I can share the link. So maybe after this class, this semester, just to take that course. That's because it takes some time. Actually, I spend the whole two days that's because it's really long, but it was really, really useful. So actually past the IIB, you have to pass the test. But I don't know about that. And then I submit it. And then I got, you know, just to, you know, feedback from that officer. So you have to take this one. So I have to do that. And then I share that information with my friends, you know. So I want to share that information before doing that. Yeah. So either next week when you present or week yeah. six when Adam presents, and you could after Adam, you could show the city exam. So yeah. that's or next week, either way. If we if you have time next week, let's show it. Uh, but if you don't have time, we'll show in week six. And and every week has a theme and has articles in Dropbox. I am not lecturing on those articles. You do not have to read those articles. They are there for you and for your information. I could le I lecture on a few of them. I may, but there's there's. There's no plans in that, you know, to follow. We're not going to follow a, a script of lectures. So this is this class is not meant to be like that. It's it's a pool of resources that are available for you to 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 access. Maybe you access them later, you know, um, after this semester. Does this all sound fair? Sound coherent, Kim? Are we coherent here? Yeah. Totally coherent. Okay. Is it, Anything else I'm I'm missing that you know? One small thing. Um, oh, oh, I see a problem. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, just on week one, it says we're going to do Padlet introductions. I think you phased that out for the Google Doc. Yeah, soon, man. Uh, no Padlet. Yeah, just the yeah Google document. Yeah. Yeah, she she hit me on the head with a padlet. She says, you made a mistake there. I made a mistake in my other class. I used last year's padlet. And so yeah. so this year we're just doing the Google Doc. But there was another mistake. It says 48 hours um, for lateness. And my other class I have 96 hours. So I might as well make it 96 for both classes. You know, try and get them in you know, on the date, but you have extra time. And, you know, don't stress out on dates. Um, because there's so many assignments, though, if you're really late on things, it's going to impact me because I'm, there's a lot of early grading anyhow in this class. 
and for me to try and get back to you. So I will scan in my marked up copies and send them to you via, you know, uh, PDF files like I normally do. Those who've had me for class, they know, you know. Um, okay. Yeah, um, just if you have any problem, issue, concern, just email us. And then we can find the you know way. That's because it's just the latest or just I can do that. That there is no solution. So if you have something just in advance, just let us know, and then we can have you know better way. Okay. Yeah. I have a question you. regarding the. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I have a question yeah, regarding the the practice quiz. So Dr. Bang, you said it was you take a lot of time to build it. So it will really time us for like three and thirty minutes. Correct. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, you know, and uh, it'll smack your fingers at the end. No, I mean, it, it, it'll time out. And so you have to keep track of things um, there. And, you know, will the real a, exam also happen on Canvas? Um, I don't oh. think so. I don't think so. I don't think they, I, I, I think you have to turn it into Dr. Brush at yeah. that set time. Right. And so you have to, you have to stop and download and send it to him whatever the time is. So he, he monitors everyone around the world, you know. And actually you will, you know, get the email, everyone differently from Dr. Brush. And then he said that how to do that. And then after the time is you show that, you know, actually right now 9 a.m. and then maybe 30, you know, three hours and a half. And then just so you know that timeline and then you have to submit before that. So actually, with 10 minutes before Dr. Brush Ping, and then after 10 minutes later, just with Dr. Brush Ping, can you submit it? Something like that, so then you can submit it. And then he just to check you submit it, and then he, he can send the confirmation email, and then that's it. Yeah. Is it a different so system person. than Canvas? No Canvas, just email. No can oh, yeah, email. No yeah, okay, no got canvas. It. Canvas is just for practice. Yeah. Totally and those are oh, I'm sorry. Those practice quizzes and everything, that's what you were saying. If we get them done, the practice quizzes and those exams that you have in there, that's what you're saying. If we get them done by mid October. Week, right, mid October, you'll actually be able to give us feedback prior to us taking the actual call. If we wait what? until exactly. okay, I got you. All right. I was just making sure that was the same thing. I was like, wait, I think yeah. that's <laughs> yeah. Thank yep. you. Yeah, it's a little confusing, but yeah, because we're doing two things in here. We're this class plus for the qualifying and Sabahat who left, she doesn't have to worry about the qualifying exam because she has a different structure. She goes through a dossier process. It's pretty hard actually what she's gone through. Um, so yeah, I prefer this over the, over the dossier one, two, three for the PhD. I wish our PhD students had this process. I've voiced it many times. This is being recorded. I, I don't mind any you repeating that to any faculty. I've 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 made my case, and I've you know it's all I can do. Um, it's really hard on the PhD students to have all the faculty there for a defense of their of their research. Um, it's really hard. I I think, uh, but it prepares them too. I mean, there's positives to the system. I, I totally understand there are positives. I just like this system better. It's the way I was trained, sort of. And uh, we used an ed site. Well, I thank you for staying a little extra tonight. I think we've gotten through a lot. There'll be some adjustments here and there, people and things that I plan to do over the coming weeks. I will say my other class syllabus, I just got done last week. It was, it was cr crazy creating a new syllabus um, based on others' work, but creating new class is always hard. So if if I'm a little bit off for the first couple of weeks and not, and can't give you all the answers of what we're going to do every week, I'm some of this is still being planned out and who I'm going to bring in. So, you know, keep in mind, I'm just this, I, I haven't had a day off since December 2nd, 2019. That's over almost a thousand days ago. Um, so because of having mass, uh, face to because of an EDD and PhD program, it's making it really hard. Um, but, we're apparently going to have a search for a new faculty member I found out today. So uh, that will help if that's true. So um, it's needed. <laughs> I'm a little tired, but I'm having fun in the process. And I hope you have fun too in this class and reach out anytime. I work from 10 in the morning till three in the morning every day. Um, usually go running in the morning, now at midnight this week. Uh, but email, anytime, phone call. My phone number is 812-322-KURT. 812-322-2878. You can call me, text me first, and we can talk at 1 a.m., 2 a.m., it doesn't matter.
Okay. So um, we'll see you next time. I hope you can come back. <laughs> and uh, finally, before we go, Ben, where are you from? Oh, I'm from uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. Uh, you work for the military or who do you work for? Uh, so I work for Sullivan University It's a, and the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences. I spoke there a decade ago. The president of the university did a rowboat across the Atlantic Ocean and almost capsized. I forgot her name. Uh, a, a pearl, a pearl in the ocean, or something. I forget the name of the book she gave gave me. But do you know who I mean? Uh, that was before my time. Okay. Uh, yeah, she capsized one time. She had to be rescued, so she ended up rowing a boat from Africa to the U.S. The first one to ever do that. It's a fascinating book, A Pearl in the Storm. Buy that book. She's. Sullivan University former president um, in, down in Louisville. Good university. Yeah, good for you. Um, see you all next time. Bye-bye.